player out there. And we're underway. Harvison gets the first set of pass to Hugo. And I wonder if Hugo will step up her goal shooting effort in okay, this match. That was an unkind welcome to Sarah Sutter. <laughs> <laughs> and Irene van Dijk, the fairest of players, at, uh, just a tumble, nothing in it, I'm sure. Avelino to Harby. There's some state combinations out there, Anne. Well, certainly the shooting combination with Avelino and Borlase is both a club and a state combination as Avelino stumbles just on that first shot. Also through the back line, we have the South Australian defence line, Filpi onto Harvey, onto Sutter, and as you pointed out, Harbs and Sutts, a contacts combination. In fact, only two states represented out there for Australia. Sutter hasn't got the height on Van Dijk. That was a good delivery to Van Dijk, but Sutter caught just a touch flat-footed, obviously nervous in her outing into this series. Uh, Sutter giving away some seven centimetres to Van Dijk. Avellino and Murphy and then Borlase. Nice move between the three. That swung very nicely for Australia and Borlase. A deadly accurate, just as is Vicky Wilson at the back. Wag swings it and the beautiful flowing movement from Avellino to Murphy to Borlase. Harvison, Hammond. Van Dijk, the high ball. This is often is not going to work, but not that time. And Steve, this is a better start from Australia. They were nervous and unsettled in the first test in Melbourne, but this is running a goal for goal and almost breaking it with Borlase, but a goal for goal balance at the moment. 3 2 Australia, and they trailed 5 2 after a few minutes in Melbourne. Fun is breaking. Avelino spilled it. South Africa charge away. Hammond wants to get it to Van Dijk quickly, and that's been achieved. Well, they used the basketball style fast break to get it down court and not a bad target in Irene van Dijk at the back. Well, Debbie Hammond, the South African captain, is used to basketball. When she was studying for a PhD in the States, she used to train with the college basketball team in the off-season, so she at least kept up a fitness and a, a game not that far removed from netball, although her, her teammates were wondering why she kept stopping so quickly. <laughs> Fitness, I think, is something that's quite outstanding with this uh, South African side. They look very fit, very lean on court as Avelino pops one in for Australia. A little over, sorry, a little over two minutes gone, 4-4. Four, four. Just about to say, if I had to pinpoint the two things I found lacking in the South African game in the first test, one would be the work of their circle defenders and not being familiar with an Australian attacking style, and the other would be the times they forced the ball into Irene Van Dyke when there were other options available to them. Ball lays with the shot. Enthusiastic defence from Kotzer, but not enough to upset Ball lays. Murphy. Eyes doing the talking there, looking for a lead. Wag. Wag moving very comfortably in the wing attack to start this match. You'll remember she was a little unsure in the first quarter last test but came through the game brilliantly and I guess Jill McIntosh will let him give her as much court time as she can to allow her to settle into that position. I think she's very dominant there. Ploppers, Algren, Kotza. Alberson was really caught with the ball for too long there after the spill. Hugo, Alberson. Doesn't look that confident with the shot, Hugo. It's a strange fall away action. A couple of spills from Avellino will allow her a few nerves in what is only her third international. No, I, I agree with you. I think Risa Hugo is a complete player, but the shots are really lacking, which makes you wonder whether there isn't the depth on the bench in shooting or whether the combination is preferred by the South Africans. Hugo over the top, well placed to Irene Fun Van Dyke, and she won't miss from there. Nearly the intercept from Harvey, just spilled out of her hands to Hugo. And Van Dyke uh, crawls in for a lead of one for South Africa. <laughs> and the smile is never far from that face. Well, it's a competitive start and quite measured from both teams. I think South Africa came out with a lot of fire in the belly and really wanting to prove themselves in the first test in Melbourne. They're very determined now, but it's slightly more measured. Just the speed off the game, the fraction. Hammond. 
Harvey. Contact, penalty pass. Oh, Harvey Pink for the contact. I think that one could have gone either way. The crowd thought so. That's an unlucky call. Contact, I mean, keeper, the, penalty pass. The preference, it could well have been a toss. Our umpires today, Janice McKercher and Jan Carlton from New Zealand. And we welcome our New Zealand viewers enjoying this series. Of South Africa on their way there contact, after this. And Lee Gibbs here. A New Zealand coach? Yes, I told her she was sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> well, she doesn't miss an opportunity to check out what her opponents will be doing. No. Cloppers um. with the ball, puts it up into the air. Van Dyke well positioned. Avellino walking away closer. It's interesting that you mentioned Lee Gibbs and, and the New Zealand presence here because I was just watching Van Dyke and watching the smile after the shot and she really reminds me of a Margaret Matenga, a Margaret Kamana that never had the smile off her face and was referred to as smiley and really brought a delightful presence to international netball. Wing the pack, and I guess hi to the Kiwi viewers, they'll all be saying yes, she's right about that. <laughs> <laughs> Hugo to Hammond who has tried to give the quick ball back but only gave it to Harvey and look out, here come the gold of Australia, Murphy. And look at the boys. options in that Australian attacking line as the ball came down court. Lots of wonderful movement. Several options operating through the circle. Avellino swings it quickly. Good hands from Murphy to find Borlase, ever steady. Australia down by one. Landed. Borlase with six from seven, so a good start from her. And doesn't Katrina Wag look comfortable with the WA on her back? Hugo, back to Cloppers. Or oh, two back on Contact keeper. Van Dyke. That's what I was referring to before when sometimes the right preference isn't taken. The option then should have been to pick up the free player and work it around and split up the defenders, but that forcing it through is just not there. You put two on one back on Van Dyke, though, you double your chances of drawing a contact. Avellino has given a, an acre of space to work with with Wag, former New South Wales teammates. Avellino, of course, moving to South Australia to look for better representative chances, and it, and it worked out for Natalie. Well, I'm sure every time she puts on the Australian jersey, she is reassured that it was the right decision in her case, and certainly enjoying her club netball with Garvel. Follows that in to get her own rebound as Avellino. Australia having trailed 8-5 and now back in front by the one. Exactly halfway through the first quarter. Kotze just a touch slow on the challenge and draws the contact. Australia just starting to open up. I'm sure they're reminding themselves that it's been the last part of each quarter where they've really pulled away in the game and uh, made a difference to the scoreline and they're prepared, they're experienced enough to hang in there and let things sort out. Avellino, missed from that range before, doesn't this time. Avellino with a shot and it's just going to go for her. Calvin guarding out of court was the clear call from Janice McKercher. You must stay quiet for the penalty, Nate. That's something we commented on in the first test, just uh, a reluctance to stay out of position until the release of the ball. There's a creeping off the mark by both uh, the South African defenders. It's going to catch them out under this whistle. I thought she said, you must stay quiet. Mm, well, that rather, too. Yeah. <laughs> rather than calm. Well, well both still... things apply. You can't direct play. If you're out of play, you yeah. can't enter into the game verbally or with any action. Both back. Murphy and Harvison with the toss-up. The whistle, free pass South Africa. But uh, Murphy went early. Well, good position then. Just found the space behind Sutter, who really was unaware that that had opened up. Oh, nicely measured pass from Wag to Murphy. Now Wag picks up Avellino. This for their 14th. Avellino not comfortable in goals yet. They're just not flowing sweetly out of the fingers. Van Dyke by comparison, 10 straight for South Africa. Just need to get more ball to her. Hammond, Cloppers. 
Oh, nearly picked up by Filky. Australian duo in the circle, not to fool. They have no intention of putting too much work into Risa Hugo when Van Dyke's the scoring machine. Unlucky from Filky. Hugo with loads of space. She doesn't really push it home as far as she could, but she attacks the post, which is good. Ball A's has scored at the other end. Harbison. Hammond working well and quietly as the little general. She's very busy, doesn't do anything that's particularly showy, but she's a real workhorse in the South African attacking line. And it's captain on captain in this with uh, wing attack Hammond on Filky, who's at wing defence. Ball A's. And not too much pressure on the Australian drive from the centre. That's pretty sweet going for Australia as they approach the circle. Hammond. Oh, Sutter came out and Harvison backed in. So simultaneous. Here's Jan Carlton. Ooh. Oh, a lucky touch in the back up there by both shooters. But it's a contact against uh, Harvison. Ploppers. And <laughs> Harvey returns the compliment. Avellino into the corner for Wag. And Avellino finds herself alone at the post. Well, we're really being spoilt with some wonderful passages of netball in this opening quarter. High scoring and some just some beautiful movement from both sides. It's a quarter time in uh, the first test. <laughs> Avellino down, but quickly up. Well, that was through Borlase's hands, and uh, Kloppers took out Avellino at the same time. I was going to say quarter time in Melbourne, it was 14-8 to Australia, it's 17-12 now, so as you say, a more high-scoring game. So another one goes in from Van Dyke. Harvison to Hugo. And, and Sutter wins that one. Well, that was always Sutter's. The release was far too low. It's really got to be put over the top into the space behind Van Dyke or full stretch in the air, and that one wasn't accommodating. Avellino and Borle is enjoying working together as they do back in Adelaide. A little bit of a sprint on towards the end of the first quarter from Australia as they take it out to six. Of settlers needed for South Africa. Oh, so nearly a step. Hugo had to get rid of it and but could only find Sutter. It's good watching by Sutter. She really held her ground and watched the movement and saw the options and sat tight, knowing that it was going to pay dividends for her. No goal to send aside and away the ball's release. So two minutes left in the first quarter. Australia by six. Seven. Murphy sent a pass to Avellino. First time for ball lays no good. Halgren picked it off easily. Going to be picked by Filky. It's pretty Red congested. That, well. that middle third, lots of... We can't afford to put uh, a slow pass through when you've got the speed of Harvey and Filky sitting across that midline, and uh, Murphy for that matter as well. And uh, the type of player that's hungry for intercepts, as are those South Australian defenders. Or straight to Cloppers. A misunderstanding between Sutter and Harvey, which is unusual. Van Dyke. South Africa needing to put the foot down in this last minute to try and uh, draw the score in. Again, good positioning by Sutter. Forces Van Dijk wide to the circle. We've not really seen him put up too many long-range shots. Contact, penalty pass, South Africa. Contact, keeper, penalty pass, South Africa. Back, please. Back. Well, well short from Van Dijk. An unusually poor shot from her. Mind you, most of hers have come from a closer range. Filky shielding the ball there. A 
Paulino does well. Well, Avelino was under a little late pressure from Murphy and she dished off to Borlais. Avelino heads first to the bench. That's quarter time. Murphy will take the first centre pass. If she does, Avelino. And Murphy given a lot of space. That was tidy work by Australia. Nice dodge on the baseline. Little room to move, but Borlais found the space. I suppose the thinking is obvious, giving everyone in the uh, squad a run, not only to keep up morale, but when, when they look towards the World Championships in Birmingham, you never know who's going to get injured, fall out of form. Uh, you may need a different combination depending on who you're playing. This is really vital what both coaches are doing. The big danger too for Jill McIntosh would be for so long now we've Deception. seen the likes of Filky Wilson dominate in their positions. You don't want to get to Worlds, lose a player particularly of that calibre and have everybody thinking, gosh, where do we go now? So I think it's great starting with, with the change lineup. Hammond for Kloppers. Hugo. Yes. <laughs> well, the two stay back on Van Dyke. I think South Africa have to take that up a little more. They've got to have the confidence to go through Hugo, as does she, to attack the post, because that, that's the only way you're going to split the Australian defence combination off Van Dyke and free her up to find her again. The ball ace had two on her there, and she was still able to get out in front of them. The goalkeeper, goal defence for South Africa. Being outplayed. Contact goal, goalkeeper, pass or shot. Van Dyke. Continues to spearhead the attack. And we watch for the long bomb from Hugo. Another sign of confidence from the South African camp. Van Dyke won't miss. Wag, Murphy, Borlais. Steve, the other feature we've got to acknowledge in this Australian line is not just the depth from the bench. Contact. Not that there Here is a true bench in this squad, but also the versatility. We see Filky swing from goal defence across to the wing. Wag, of course, could be utilised in goals. Murphy can sit really anywhere across the middle. Harvey again. Well, Harvey got a touch on that for it to spill into the arms of a teammate. Here she is. Isn't she enjoying having a run through the middle? I mean, she gives you the opinion she'd like to go five quarters. Hammond. Looking for an improved effort if uh, they're down by 10 or a dozen at half time. Maybe some of those bench players will find themselves on. Oh, Hammond into the corner. Hugo had a passage to that part of the court cut off. A little bit sloppy out there from both teams. Gone. Murphy muscles past Harvison. So one of the earlier moves down court for Australia. Wag, I noticed, had a foot over the uh, over the circle, and the umpires didn't pick it up. It's one of those disciplines that, as a, a usual goal attack, she mightn't be so strong on. I've seen that a couple of times, and it's it's made me smile. Just the foot moving across to be parallel with the line <laughs> instead of flapping over it. Yeah. We have to give her a few inches. <laughs> well, the umpires did unintentionally. Wag puts it to, to Avelino, swings it as we see her so often, just to move the space around for Borlais. Van Dijk now. But I feel South Africa have got to keep this lead under 10 at half time. Just give themselves a, a genuine chance of taking this match, because there's no doubt after watching the Melbourne test, Australia is at least as fit as South Africa. Oh, absolutely, and as we keep saying, they have to their advantage the years of experience that South Australia has missed being out of the South Africa. <laughs> Pinch me next time. Okay. Direction on your land to go to Pierce County, pass the shot. Marlene Wagner, the coach, and Charmaine Singh on the left, the manager. I 
spoke with her after the test in Melbourne and she said that their problem is they just can't get enough of the Australian style and that's what they'll be after. Four layers. But it's one thing to watch Australia play at World Championships as they have done over the years. It's another to be out there against them and only from that position will they improve. Well, both uh, New Zealand and Australia very anxious to get a, a gauge of South Africa's ability. South Africa drawn in the same initial pool as New Zealand in the World Championship. So they're going to meet them early and then Australia will probably get them in the second half of the competition. Avellino wide open. I think South Africa would be a wonderful team to play just before you're heading into finals, assuming that they may not have made it that far. Drive from Filky from the back. Ball lays on the drive out of the circle. Avelino quickly into the circle, just holds the space on the base. And one at the other end. So seven the lead. Yeah, as I was saying, I think that an ideal team to play nearing the end of the competition, they'd give you a tremendous fight. You would be confident that at your best you could get past them, but they'd prepare you well for a final. So a penalty brought right up to the circle now. The Hugo and Van Dijk. And they've got it back to six. Well, they're still within touch. Just when you think Australia could really run away with the game, uh, there's a stickability about South Africa and a determinedness that just won't give in. Oh, Harvey saw it. Oh, oh back up from Evelino to great play. Well, we saw a play like that from Liz Ellis in the first test. Harvey equally keen to impress. Contact, goal with Penalty pass. Back at the edge of the takeoff. Evelino. Great shot then of the movement across the baseline towards the ball. You see the speed at which it travels on this court. Avelino with a second chance. And watch for Harvey, full steam. Doesn't she love it? The touch, the back up, and then she's the next one to drive through the middle. It's quickly back to Borlase. And Australia kick it out to eight again. And we're halfway through the second quarter. Hammond, Hugo. That's better Obviously. work from South Africa. The movement around the circle that demands the defender switch, change position, come off a two-on-one. Unfortunate uh, result for them, but that was more like the sort of stuff that will split the Australian defence. It's picked up for a stepping ball. So the footwork letting them down. Australia making them pay but the this simple is error. nice play from Australia but just watch South Africa's defense caught lacking caught wrong way it was caught sir and what was a lead of six is now ten in the space of what 90 seconds double contact take a toss Sutter and Van Dijk the toss well, I saw the Australians practicing the toss-up drill at uh, training yesterday. They're all pretty quick. It's pretty hard to tell when uh, the hands move away too early. <laughs> I think it's a hard one to judge. How do you blow the whistle, toss the ball and watch four hands at the same time? Avelino. Well, Australia looking good and all players from the squad having entered this test series. So just for Jill McIntosh really to explore some new combinations. Contact. Contact. Good aggression then from Murphy to run onto the ball. Not known for backing off a contest. <laughs> He's a little terrier. She's more known as a, as a defensive centre, but when the team is moving forward and, and playing so well in front, there's nothing wrong with her as an attacking centre. No, there's nothing lacking in attack. I guess it's just that her defence is so outstanding, you tend to comment on that. And Harvey takes ball, Sutter and all. Lucky they're good friends. <laughs> Up they will come. <laughs> Everybody's OK. I anyway, think. Harvey means business, she means business, eh? 
I think Sutter, Sutter actually, regrets it, yes. Yeah, Sutter has a sore wrist. No bet, please. Having said everyone was okay. Hugo Harbison, a loose pass from the goal attack. Five minutes left, second quarter, 35-25. And that time the misunderstanding is from the Australians. Wag finding only South Africa. High ball in quickly for Van Dyke. Too tall even for her. And Van Dyke wasn't really setting up for the high ball. She had a bit of movement happening. I think she had the head down as well, and it's uh, always important to have the vision up. Yeah, I think it was a ball she could have got if she knew it was coming. <laughs> Murphy, Avellino. Disorganisation's catching, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fast, but at times disorganised at both ends. But Australia quicker to pick up the scraps. Aussies are awesome. High 11 at the moment. Halligan just continuing a little too long with the contest. And those top shot hands flapping in the crowd, getting quite a workout. Well, I don't think uh, the Australian crowd minds seeing Australia win and win well when they're playing so well. Sutter with a rebound. Murphy to Harvey. Ball lays Avellino. It's looking a little ominous for South Africa. Just this thinking, I'm sure Bob Dwyer watching this match would uh, like to be in a similar position. Yeah, well, <laughs> in South Africa. That's right, Australia <laughs> has drawn South Africa in the first match of the tournament. The uh, defending champions against the host nation. What a match that will be. In fact, the two codes, uh, Union and Netball, very closely matched on their track records and uh, their discipline and the way they present the sports. And of course, it was in 1991 that uh, Australia picked up the double, the Rugby World Cup and the Netball World Championship. They're in sync. Every four years, both championships held. Australia nudges 40. Hammond, Cloppers. Well, it's footwork, but it was a great contest from Marianne Murphy. She's relentless in defence, as we mentioned earlier. She and goes. has an uncanny capacity to keep going, as does Harvey. He's becoming a little greedy about the intercepts. <laughs> Ended up in the lap of uh, team doctor Grace Bryant, nearly needed her. Murphy, oh, this has opened right up for the Australians on the charge. It's good to watch. Well, there was nothing on Murphy on that drive through the midcourt to the circle. Harveston caught well out. Bullet pass from Avellino to Borlase. Fifteen, the lead. It was ten at half time in the first test. Contact with the ball. So even without Vicky Wilson, the Australians putting their foot down here. It's my feeling she uh, was never going to play tonight because she's carrying a little bit of a back strain. Didn't uh, really stretch out in training yesterday. It's getting more treatment than anything else. Van Dyke. And a great hook from Van Dyke as she plucks it out of the air. Not so ready with the smile as a side that slips out of contention a little in this second quarter. Now she's put up 10 straight, so she's well on target, but I'm sure she'd enjoy more access to the ball. So inside the last minute of the second quarter. Four lays, though, uh, superb for Australia. 15 from 16 in his second stanza. Well, you can do no more than uh, give your coach that headache. Have, have all your shooters on form. 
which is not one of those nice kind of headaches all coaches crave. And it's very comfortable to sit and watch a team leading by this margin. <laughs> Mind you, you've got to get them in that position and the hard work's done off the court usually. Murphy, wag. Ball yeah. A's looking for Murphy. <laughs> it's fallen nicely for the Australians. Held ball, free pass. Held ball, says Jan Carlton. I think that's a quick three. I think sometimes uh, when it's been running so fast, if you do stop to delay the release and, and mix your timing, it's often grabbed as a held ball. Three seconds, of course, the limit. Well, Van Dyke screening space then. Under another whistle, she may well have gone for holding a silk, but uh, she gets the penalty and uh, does a good job of it. Lucky it was a penalty because time was up. There's the new player on it, goalkeeper. Has the job of looking after Jenny Borlase. So this is Melk's first run in the series. Hammond to Van Dyke, an Australian hands all over it. That was called the hands to the head chant dance by <laughs> Harvey and Sutter. Van Dyke breaks away, but it comes to Hammond, but she can't handle it. Well, they squeeze the space in on Filky then, probably ro the wrong option to, to run by her, but they get away with it. Avellino holding space. Well, they came out to look after Borlase, but that opened it up in the far corner for Murphy and Avellino to work it. And as we mentioned earlier, that's the difference, the amount of option in the Australian attack line. Two, three, four places to go with the ball because the movements are offered by that number of players. And Eleanor Melk beaten for pace there, but uh, Jenny Borlase stepped out. Melk, uh, teacher from Cape Town. at 183 centimetres. She's uh, giving away no height to Tessa Halvin, who was on before her. So the South African defenders have the height on Borlase and Avellino, but not the pace or the understanding with their feeders. Oh, nice swing again from Avellino. She loves to turn it cross court. Contact goal defence. So you're right. A little clip there from Kotzer. Checks Natalie's well-being. <laughs> South Africa yet to score in this third quarter. They've got to get moving. So much pressure over the ball from the Australians. The advantage played then to allow Harvey to uh, dispose of the ball and to keep driving rather than holding up play. Adding to the momentum of what is already a very fast game. There's some pretty things on court in terms of the way that ball's swinging for Australia. Well, Wag's about the only wing attack I know that has the height and the reach to pull that one in. Another step call against uh, Murphy. I haven't had to call her name too much. I, I've done a lot of work off the ball, I guess, but uh, her teammates playing so well around her, she, she doesn't need to stamp her authority on the game as much. Also, because uh, the approach is to the circle, Harvey on the drive, long ball into Avellino. What a delightful offload from Harvey. Also, Steve, because the approach is so much to Van Dyke, it cuts out a lot of the players around, so you don't get them involved as much nor their opponents. Much needed goal for South Africa in the third quarter. They're first. They now scored 4-1. Start of this passage. This milk's arm all over ball A's. Harvison. Back to Kotzer. Hammond to Hugo. Again, two back on Better Van Dyke. play from South Africa. That's exactly what an Australian formula would think to do. Drive somebody along the base to pull attention away from the person that's on the hold. Watch the drive here from Hugo. It attracts attention from Sutter. Splits her off Van Dyke, and that's what frees her for the pass. Jackson, second 
ball ace. It's the 50th. Hugo, let's see if she can uh, repeat the, the build-up moments ago. Quick hands, again, a better approach from them. I don't think she really needed to fall away there. The defender wasn't right on her. I think it's a natural part of her shooting style. I haven't seen her put a shot up where it hasn't involved a back step through the series. It's interesting because it's the thing I most hated to do. <laughs> it's something she le she's learned to do with her height. Not a tall goaler at 175 centimetres. At least not standing next to Van Dyke at 190. Yeah, but tell that to a Margie Caldo who was probably smaller and always shot through two feet straight up, nice high position and never missed. And made the rest of us have to shoot that way. <laughs> that one doesn't count. A good stretch then from... Uh, Try up. Right. Wag to bring it in. Goal shoot, when you pass. Against ball lays, off the ball. Few niggly things happening down that circle end where uh, Melka is um, forcing a bit of contact, closing off spaces. Borla has just come on the wrong end of it a couple of times. Sada, Milky, Murphy. I think with Wag at wing attack, Milky at wing defence, you're seeing the versatility of the Australian lineup here. And of course, many times in uh, Super League, we've seen Avellino and Borlase happily swap at any moment and uh, change the, the leads around. Uh, they're very able uh, and versatile. Well, when you consider a squad of 12 and that it carries four shooters, the shooting combinations are almost endless, as most other areas of the court. But these particular shooters are very versatile. The thing you won't see often, I guess, is Wilson play up the front. But from the other three, you could put them in either spot. The other good thing is when we've changed the combinations where Wilson is very dominant, we see Borlais assume that same sort of dominance uh, as, as the shooter that's uh, on strike. Murphy. Wag. Bounce to Borlais. Chris Darwood just stretching up uh, off the back of the court. Well, Van Dyke not even going for that one. Put the tackle in there. Floppers with the intercept for South Africa. Well, they've been enjoying closing the space off on Borlase in this quarter. They were just stretching up, uh, probably going to rest somebody from the midcourt in the final quarter. Dalwood, of course, was centre in the first test, so maybe it's Murphy. Or oh, Murphy could move to wing attack and they could rest Wag. Don't start on all the options again. <laughs> we'll be here longer than the game. Or Wag could move into the circle. <laughs> on hit. Outside, coming past. Outside. And Milk having to stand beside. Open it up for ball lays. And 10-4. South Africa outscored in this third quarter. Their third quarter was their best in Melbourne. There's always going to be a, a question, who would improve the most having played each other for the first time in many, many years? Who took away the most lessons? And it looks like it might have been Jill McIntosh. Yeah, I think though we've concentrated on trying to see improvement for South Africa and we've expected it in a matter of three days. Whereas we've really got to remember for Australia that was their first outing in 1995 too with a lot more mileage behind them. So I guess we could expect them to really raise the level as well. South Africa, we've got to give them more time but I think there's some great signs there from them. Harvison, Hammond. Van Dyke, meant for Hugo. The long arm of Sarah Sutter went out. And still the two stay back on Van Dyke. Happy to let Hugo chance her arm. She doesn't let them down this time. She's 
lifted her rate, uh, put up two in the first Wilson test, goal defense, and she's defense, put Tony up uh, six Australia. to date in this match. I mean, it's not a huge uh, increase, but at least she's involving herself more and assuming that role, which is a sign of confidence. And as we've said, the important thing is to keep changing the pattern to make the Australian defence line think and, uh, and adjust. Avellino takes the pass gratefully from uh, Kurtzer. High ball, she pulls it in, but uh, just can't hold a balance, and Avellino's there for the backup. Kotzer, I should say. Kurtzer, Amanda Kurtzer is a South African tennis player. Different pronunciation for Kotzer. Oh! Time. And the two only had eyes for the ball. Wag and Harvison. Dominic Harvison gets up. Fuki looks down. Wag's on line to the ball. Harvison keeps going through. And Dr. Grace Bryant comes out to check on Katrina Wag. It's a pretty tough customer. I think she'll be all right. She's talking to both Dr. Bryant. <laughs> yes. How many of me are there? <laughs> Ball A's. Flawless performance for both Ball A's and Avellino in this third quarter. Six for Ball A's, seven for Avellino. So the Australian shooting duo right on target in this third period. Everyone a little early into the centre third. I think Marlene Wagner's got to make some changes at three-quarter time. The sting's gone out of the South African effort. They're just a little overwhelmed at this stage. Milk hasn't been able to do anything at the back. Yes, that's the thing that's a stark contrast to the first test. There was a lot of fight that continued across the game and, and a lot of momentum. And, and you're right, the whole feeling's gone out of the game for them. And they're really just playing out the space. But Australia looking too comfortable. It's a much better ball in. Here you go. High ball. Van Dyke in great position. Down they go again. Kotzer and double. Avellino. Double, attack, goal defense. Both double contact call. So who broke, Steve? Uh, that was fair, that one. <laughs> contact, goal defense. Tony Pass the shot. Milk trying really hard to get the hand out early and low over the shot, but she really has to give it in the first place. Well, she was smiling all through that. I wonder if uh, Marlene Wagner isn't tempted to put Odendahl on in the centre. She certainly started the, the first test full of running and enthusiasm and ideas. I thought she was tough and very serviceable. She certainly had a spark. Oh, Melk allowed to come right in on Borlase the there. Borlase. We'll get the second go now, although it's through Avellino. Well, Melk a little confused. I think she felt that uh, she had possession, but the call was on the second jump. Sada online. Well, that was never deep enough for Van Dyke. Sixteen to eight this quarter going Australia's way, and there's two and a half minutes left. And just not enough height on the ball. You see Sutter's in good position. She'll have that one. Now to ball A's. I think in, in view of how close the Australian-New Zealand series was last year, the, the series split 2-1, uh, Kiwis would be feeling reasonably confident watching this, that they uh, may have New uh, South Africa's measure. They'll find out next week. Yes, I think you're right. Australia and New Zealand still obviously the dominant forces. And uh, this series has given every indication that South Africa will be up there, but it's premature for them now. Hammond. Harvison out positioned by Harvey. Okay, 
Australia. Yeah, Harvison trying a heart out, but just not the speed and uh, and not the positioning to contest those one passes down the court. And it's caught her uh, out of play several times as a result. Marissa Dalwood continuing to warm up at the back of the court for Australia. So it's certainly looking like we're going to see her in the fourth quarter. And Odendahl now just leaving the South African bench. Perhaps they could have their own little war off court out the back. <laughs> They're They'll probably ends. come on to play each other. Yeah, as they did uh, in Melbourne. Thought Dalwood had a fine game in that first test. She really was a... Uh... <laughs> Dyke just realised she was standing at the wrong end of that toss-up. Oh. Put her hand to her head to <laughs> on the other side. Van Dyke, strong rebound. <laughs> well, it was a struggle, but it was the 37th. And we're inside the last minute, third quarter. Didn't have to leap for that one. She's a little out of practice. She's had so few shots up in this third quarter. She's off balance on the last two shots. Just trying to hold up the landed foot so it didn't re-ground. She's probably safe to put it down. But she's just making sure and it just didn't steady the shot. Well, three-quarter time. Here you go. Only two, but uh, two from two. So accuracy there for her. So Renee Odendahl on for Tony South Africa. Tony Marissa Dalwood uh, at wing attack. A position I've not seen her play in, uh, in Australian colours. No, um, I've seen her play there, but only rarely. And certainly, I think, more suited to the centre position. But uh, she'll be having to think this one through into the spaces it's a vastly different position to center obviously where you have a lot more room wing attack you've got to be quite precise and uh, a greater feeding role as well so 25 the margin as renee odendahl gets us going she's the new center 32 year old teacher from pretoria head of the maths department oh, i'm sure she doesn't like the look of the numbers on the board here Van Dyke. The mission initially for South Africa has got to be to hold Australia, not let them kick away even Contact further. Keeper with the ball, penalty pass. Well, I think in their minds they've got to wipe the, wipe the slate clean and go out, score is uh, nil all, and we've got to win this period of play. Salvage something and then uh, work from that in the next test. As we keep saying, it's early days for them, so you can't uh, be too disappointed from the series. The point is they're out there, they're now in the international arena and uh, with each step I think they'll get better. This is the first time Australia has played South Africa in a multi-test series. They'd only met before at world championship level in 63 and 67. Australia won both those encounters, narrowly only in uh, 1967 in Perth. Dalwood. Murphy. Goal defense, penalty pass. Ooh, Milk. Goal <laughs> right in. Yeah, that was a little clumsy, the uh, challenge at the shot. Of course, the leap at the ball has to be from uh, outside of three feet. And that was more a stab from well inside. Floppers at uh, Filky's hands to it. Harvey to pick it up. Well, here they come. They've got numbers, Australia. A touch on it from Milk. That was a great drive down court. It really had some speed on it between Murphy and Dalwood. Just the finish not there. They find the spaces now. Kotzer. Hammond. Van Dyke. for the margin so they're going goal for goal in the early stages of this final quarter well, taken by Borlase and Darwood hung off in the space well so she had a good offload and then the chance to drive the circle that's tidy stuff from Australia really solid collision between Borlase and Kloppers and uh, Kloppers came off second best Oh, 
both the Australians read that. I think as the match progresses, they're understanding South Africa's patterns all too well. I think, too, uh, South Africa underestimating the speed of Australia in that the, the ball still has a lot of float from them. And if you're going to put a ball up that's lacking speed, the Australian's legs will run through onto it. So you've either got to quicken the ball or you've got to put a fake out or delay it, change your option. The lightning hands of Murphy feed ball A's. Australia's now eased past its uh, winning total from Melbourne. The uh, margin was 66-44. Van Dyke, can't shoot from out there. Can't find a way back to the post. Three pass. Surprisingly high number of stepping calls uh, from the umpires. Mind you, this uh, game being played at uh, quite some pace pretty hard to uh, restrict yourself to that step and a half at uh, full speed all match or have your eyes keep up <laughs> both out shot just being reset again the South Africans a little toey to get off the mark they creep in off the mark and uh, by our whistle you would have a defender pull back again and have it retaken if the shot was unsuccessful well, Jill McIntosh on the Australian bench looks Australia. very confident very pleased, I'm sure, with the effort put out by Australia in the first two tests. Well, I think the performance and the depth and the versatility, great signs looking down the track uh, to world titles in England in July this year. No doubt uh, New Zealand watching with just as much interest and the hopes just as high. And we have to credit both Australia and New Zealand at the moment as being outstanding in international netball, both superb sides. Ball A's. Yes, and already Australia and New Zealand being tipped to replay uh, the World Championship final from 91 when they get to Birmingham. Who's that pass well, to? Well, Popper's passing to the umpire and she could kick herself. That was a really nice charge from South Africa. The backup was there. The crowd uh, applauded contact, their efforts and uh, she just saw the movement the way, and didn't realise it wasn't dark green. Oh, how quick was Avelino? <laughs> It was quick. <laughs> I'm telling you quick. I saw the lady in the first row off the back line put her hands up for that one. In fact, my niece nearly caught it. What a treat for kids here uh, watching this match, not just to see the Australian line. I mean, that's a delight in itself, but to think in sort of 10 years' time that they were sitting here watching a historic match. Tilky threads it through to Dalwood. Avellino looking for Murphy. Odendale is offside. Well, guilty of the contact. And now the keeper. Just a little undisciplined. The goalkeeper, goal defence for South Africa. Now that's a relaxed bench. <laughs> Avelina looked just a touch unsure when she started the match in goals, but she's come through well. She's sitting on something like 14 straight, 14 or 15, make it 16 straight. And they're hitting the centre of that ring now. Harvey's had a field day. Murphy has been relentless through the middle. Hammond. OK, goal, Kate. Coming back. So they're just backing into the space taken by Van Dijk. The trick there is on Van Dijk's part to really hold the space well, not move off the mark, not force in. Odendahl. Oh, nice switch from Odendahl. Seven minutes to go, 30 the margin. 11-6 though, the quarter score, so far more competitive from uh, South Africa in trying to stay in the game. Sort of back to what they were at in the first quarter before they really lost the spirit. 
Avellino makes him suffer again, though. I thought watching a, a replay of the, of the first test, what was obvious with Australia's shooting was that much of it was close to the post. Wilson and Cusack didn't have to take a lot of long shots. And again, that's uh, pretty much what's happening here. The Australian passage to close to the post is uh, just too easy. Yeah, the, the other factor is, though, the Australian girls aren't scared to put it up from mid or long range. So um, they're prepared to take that on, whereas... Uh, in the case of Risa Hugo, she's far more comfortable getting in close. Van Dyke, it's not an issue. She's always close. There's a lesson for you in uh, attackers <laughs> looking to do the defensive work. Avelino, the intercept near the transverse line. And there should be another Australian goal shortly. Ball lays. You go. Sutter. Well, incorrect footwork at the throw in, says uh, Janice McKercher from Sarah Sutter. So, uh, soft turnover for South Africa. Harvey. Cookie. Well, you mentioned that uh, Kath Harvey's had a great match. Certainly the, the judges have thought so. She's picked up the $1,000 uh, Milo Player of the Match Award, which went to uh, Irene Van Dyke in the first test. This time to a defender. And uh, proof that it's not always the attackers that uh, catch the eye. Well, that deserved a goal. That was sweet play from the Australian attacking line. They made it look effortless. Uh, Michelle Fulke just attracting uh, the umpire's attention. I think uh, Sarah Sutter it is who needs the attention. She, she is uh, being seen to by Grace Bryant. I can't see what it is. Maybe Sarah Sutter can't see too well either. It was it's around the eye somewhere. One knows. Certainly, if she's got a bleeding nose, she has to go off. Contacts? Oh, contact, yeah. Contacts. Not the club. <laughs> For whom she plays. <laughs> the seeing apparatus. Yeah. <laughs> Can't see much. <laughs> it's up there, she says. It's somewhere up there. Right. Well, that's fair enough, because most of the deliveries will be coming from that direction. So. Oh, oh a heavy knock. Odendahl and Filkey. Long ball delivery through the midcourt. Filke uh, striving the ball, but Odendahl in possession. Cow, please. Yeah. Gives you some idea of the commitment of the players Cow. to the ball. Can we see it? I just need to wipe the floor to get some of the perspiration off. Just get down on your hands. Have a bit of a swipe around, says Janice McKercher. Okay. Which has been done. So four minutes to go. 76-46, Van Dyke. A great pull-in. And they've come alive. Odendahl fakes it, puts it up. What a haul-in by Van Dyke. The extraordinary thing about her is that not only, and there's another one, is she the tallest player in the team, but she also has the best vertical jump. So the natural attributes are there to be a great shooter, and she is. And the intercept. South Africa lifting in the dying stages, but Sutter saw it somehow. <laughs> Through a good eye. She's had Step. a fine game too at the back. I mean, we talked about Liz Ellis's brilliance in the first test. Sutter's been uh, very handy for Australia. Odendahl, Hammond. Hugo. Three minutes to go. 76-49. Well, it was the only option left. Ooh. And that one's against Sutter. So Van Dyke converts. So that 
pulled it back to 26 after it was 30 at one stage. Contact with the ball, penalty pass. A little bit to, to chew over for both coaches between now and Saturday when they meet in Brisbane. I guess uh, Australia could put out another combination again. And with the series one, South Africa would certainly be looking at uh, running some of their bench players who haven't yet had a lash. A few players have had a close look at the floor tonight. Sort of plants the ball. Van Dyke. Two minutes to go. Harvey. Ball lays. Leads out. Avellino. Shoot over Milk. Dalwood. And holding his space well was Borlais to keep Melk away and falling towards the pass. So as we get towards the end of the match, it looks like Australia will have been able to increase their lead at every break. By seven at quarter time, 16 at half time, 25 at three quarter time. The lead is 29. in the crowd didn't like the last call that saw South Africa lose possession Avellino finishes off a sweeping down court move from Australia this is beautiful work Murphy to Avellino up they come again Avellino once more they're just too quick finishing full of running as they did in Melbourne Under a minute left. Australia had a big last quarter in Melbourne. 18 8. And now they're just emphasizing their dominance in this series. Avellino. They scored that goal in about two and a half seconds, bringing applause even from the South African bench. 83 50. And South Africa were hoping to get closer to Australia in this second test. They've been shown otherwise by a very determined and changed Australian outfit. There is full time. A magnificent effort from Australia.